Good morning, pregame crew. How are y'all doing? It's Thursday, February 3rd, 8.23 a.m. Eastern, 6.23 a.m. Mountain Time. I'm already starting to dream about our summer meetup. I cannot wait. Chart Guys members, I will see you. Anyone coming to our meetup in June, it's getting closer. We, I don't think we've officially announced the dates, but be on the lookout for that, TCG members. Hi, audio visual check, please. Hi, A y'all, Ween, Karkuki, Blue Dog, Mark, Dino, Fat N, Topher, John, Greg, Amara, Asia, Andre. Yes, I can go over Ada. How about I go over Ada right now and we just start ripping the band aid off? How about that? I'm going to do Ada USDT Binance. Let's check things out. Oh, thanks, Chuck. I appreciate it. Hey, Wave. Hey, Anu. Thank you, Script Shaman. I appreciate that. Script Shaman, are you a new member in TCG? I, I thought I saw your name pull up last night. Jorge, Lisa, Matt. It is in North Carolina. Hey, Argilio. Hey, Keggers. Hey, Jorge. All right, let's look at stuff. <clears throat> I know to go to the monthly on ADA because I trade it. I don't talk about it as often as I probably should that I trade crypto. So we have support at 92 cents and we hit 0.917. So right now we have a monthly double bottom and we are staying inside, of course, January's action. We just opened up this month and we're still inside last month's action, which is a good sign. We really want to hold 92 cents. So that's the biggest picture view I can give you. Weekly is not oversold. Daily is not oversold. This is a steady, steady churn. This could be a four hour bear flag. We have an inside bar as well. Resistance 1043, support 1016. On the hourly, do you see how we're just staying below that 50 RSI? Do you see how we're staying below that? And again, a lower high is most likely compared to 1043. Then on the 15 minute, we're attempting to change that trend. We have a double top now. Do you see how I went monthly, weekly, daily, four hour? But there was one that stood out. Was it the four hour or daily? Daily. So you see, this is alarming to me. When we're going sideways and staying within a fixed range and we're not building energy, do you see how the energy is just going to the downside with this histogram? That's concerning. We're below the 50 RSI. The bulls are nowhere to be found and we're not squeezing. Typically, let me find another area. Look here. When we went sideways, do you see how we built energy and it was pause? It was just, we were at least building energy. Either it was going to go to the upside or downside. We have no energy. This in the medical world, they call malaise. This is, this chart is asleep, just totally asleep. So, um, <laughs> it reminds me of my medical records days, but anyway, very, lethargic extremely lethargic chart is the best way i could describe it with that four hour potential bear flag good morning argilio christian dino lt train man tammy if y'all only knew how good tammy's laugh was i wish i could just bottle it if i could bottle tammy's laugh i could sell it hey roger I am Steven. I am not super alarmed this morning with the action, if you can believe that. I am not super alarmed at all. Okay, who wants Apple? Dina want, Dino wants Apple. My sister's name is Dina. I know your name is Dino. We call her Dino. I have Apple on my list. You see, I have a lot of alerts set for Apple. I probably should set an alert for first hourly oversold just in case we get there. I've been setting a lot of alerts today. It doesn't mean I'll trade them all, but I've been setting them nonetheless. We do have a squeeze building on Apple. Apple is building energy in this sideways action. It is notable for me. This is actually the most notable chart that I found this morning. Apple holding the low of yesterday and after hours, despite that Facebook reaction, even though Facebook is XLC and Apple is XLK, they're still part of QQQ and the NASDAQ. And for Apple to hold yesterday's low, extremely notable for me. And if Apple does not roll over, I don't see NASDAQ rolling over much more than it has. Of course, it really took a big black eye overnight, so I'm not saying it hasn't rolled over. But I'm saying Apple is holding up relatively strong, impressive, to the point of being impressive. And I would even give it down to 17231. If it could hold that level, it could 
almost single-handedly prop up this market. You're welcome, Andrew. Hey, Roger. How are y'all? Are you having a good morning? Are you having a good day? How's your trading week? Yeah, it's not as red as I expected either, Fred. Hey, Patrick, how are ya? Patrick is our resident healthcare expert. He's resuscitated a billion people, just kidding, but a lot. And we're so lucky to have him in TCG. He contributes a ton. Hey, Dono, how are ya? You could probably tell in my voice I'm sounding better. And yesterday I typed Tuesday, February 2nd. I guess I was just obsessed with twos. And so I typed Tuesday. And I don't think any of you called me out on it. So that's okay. But when I have a blonde moment, please let me know. Facebook bulls. I think if you hit the like button, Apple could single-handedly prop up the market. I'm going to turn on my little fan. If it gets too loud, please let me know. Thank you, Media Pirates. I appreciate it. I can take a look at Crow. Let's do it. Uh, why did I type Crow Coin? I know better. I'll look at Coinbase. It, let's see. The volume is pretty good on that, so that should be adequate. On the monthly, we're looking for a higher low compared to November when it launched. Low of $0.25. Cents. That should be doable. Weekly, we have double end sidebars. Here and here, resistance 444, and then support 329. Okay, so we're set. It looks as though we've set that daily lower high, and now we're pulling back and we've set a lower low. Four hour not oversold. These charts that are just going, they're floating down in such a masterful way with RSI going sideways, that's concerning. That means it's just programmatic selling so they are just selling this so methodically and just bringing price down without getting price oversold slightly concerning hourly did get oversold 30 minute getting beaten down by the 8 ema pretty weak chart even on the 15 minute you see on the 15 minute we can't even hold higher lows we drop to lower lows and we had, a, we had enough room there to do it. Just a really weak, overall weak coin and downtrends on most time frame. Yeah, isn't a downtrend on every time frame but monthly? Let's see, can I give it a five, five minute? It's in an uptrend. How about that? Five minute, it's in an uptrend. So just know who you're working with. You know, when a friend shows you who they are, believe them. When anyone shows you who they are, believe them. When a chart shows you who it is, believe them. Crow is a bear. It's not a crow. It's a bear. It's a bearish chart. When it shows you who it is, believe it and stay with the trend. There are so many traders, including myself, especially at the beginning of my journey, who fight the charts and try to go opposite of the charts, trying to be cute. Stay with the trend. It will help you. So y'all ready to get started? Yeah, hit the like button. <laughs> You're cute. Look at Hex. Okay, I'm going to look at X because you asked so nicely. You asked yesterday, didn't you? Okay, human healer, calm down. Calm down. So on X, we're looking for a daily lower high. We're looking for a weekly lower high. Four hour is in an uptrend. Do you see how we got a problem? Maybe if I do it with path, you can see it a little easier. So we have this lower low, lower high. We have enough room for a higher low. We have a dividend coming up to be aware of, and that's tomorrow. Okay. One second, let me get this person. Okay. Good morning, Muhammad. How are you? So we're looking for a weekly lower high, a daily lower high. On the four hour, we're in an uptrend. And when the four hour uptrend is lost, 2109, we could assume that daily lower high is then likely set. And then we would look for first hourly oversold to try to set that daily higher low. Resistance 2216. Actually, I like this for a top fish today. A top fish against 2216. 
All right, let's get started. Good morning. I'm Chart Guy Lori. I'm part of the Chart Guys community. We teach technical analysis. This is who I am at Chart Guy Lori on Twitter. If you want to follow me, if you want to check out our website, chartguys.com. And what we do is teach people how to fish. And what I do is tell you where the hot fishing spots are every morning on the pregame show. So I go over indices, commodities, cryptos, movers, and shakers. And I try to give you a lay of the land as we unpack the day. I try to help you avoid landmines. Again, I try to point you toward the hot fishing spots. It's up to you to bring your fishing pole and set that hook. So let's get started with ES. Let's look at my notes. All right, Thursday, February 3rd, this ain't your pappy's market. This market is so dominantly driven with algos and computers. It's literally the same stock market, the same tulip market that was in Holland or Netherlands, excuse my ignorance as to where it was, but it's the same crowd psychology herd mentality that these charts track. The difference now is computers. So it's the same reactions, but it just, it's more volatile because we have computers, it's tracking it and trading it lightning fast. So we have a lot more ups and downs, which is a lot of opportunity for the seasoned, consistently profitable trader. And if that's not you yet, that's okay. We can help you get there. So I found it interesting when I was Googling herd behavior and psychology because the charts that we track, these charts track human behavior, crowd psychology. But I thought this was the most impressive sentence that I read. Those who study human behavior have repeatedly found that the fear of missing an opportunity for profits is a more enduring motivator than the fear of losing one's life savings. Read that again. I'm gonna, I typed it, the same thing. Let me put the black background so it doesn't kill your eyes. This is white, but those who study human behavior have repeatedly found that the fear of missing, so FOMO, FOMO is a bigger motivator than the fear of losing money. So the fear of losing money is capitulation. And then what's a short squeeze? A short squeeze is a form of FOMO. And overall, that's what keeps our market going up more naturally than down because of FOMO. And also our market is designed to go up. So all you perma bears out there, I know you don't want to hear this, but the S&P is created of 500 of the best companies publicly traded companies that have proven a historical track record of a consistently profitable P&L, earnings, revenue growth, sales growth. And these companies must maintain that to stay in the S&P 500. So if you're only cherry picking the best of the best, it's kind of like going to a school, going to a college and say, I only want your 500 top students and then we're gonna average their GPA every day. And then if you know the bottom 10% keep hanging out in the bottom 10%, they get thrown out of that top 500 and you find 10, 50 more students that are very strong and you're constantly weighting their cumulative GPA every day. What's that number gonna look like? It's always gonna be up because you're only picking the best of the best. So I know that the market has been scary as of late December and January, it's been scary, but the market is designed to go up and we have moments like what day was that? Like Monday? We have moments like, let's see, this was Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday. We have days like Friday and Monday where you have all this green because FOMO. FOMO kicks in and FOMO is much stronger emotion than capitulation and fear of losing your life savings. I thought that was pretty profound. If you're interested in my chart setup, it's on the screen now. And I just go at my rate and we have moderators in the room that will answer any questions that you have. So if I'm not monitoring the room, they are. So it's just how we have to move, just to keep it moving. So Facebook with a miss, Facebook did a face plant. Facebook is really dragging the market down. So it's been pretty crazy. It's been, uh, I'm trying to think of the first one. Netflix down, Apple up. What was Microsoft was down then up. Google up then offering down. Facebook down. Spot da down. Snap not, wasn't snappy. And now Amazon. Amazon's gonna round out our final, final fang 
earnings today after hours. What's going to happen? We don't know. But that's why we've just had are the reasons attributed to this massive volatility. Snap with not so snappy earnings. Apple's been holding strong. This is the key canary for us. I don't have enough exclamation points. I can't type it enough to tell you how important this is. Super important. Apple is the key canary for us. And it's my contention that Apple needs to hold this 172.31. If it holds yesterday's low, super strong. If it holds Tuesday's low, that's fine too. So Apple consolidation will come. But daily, we're not overbought. There is runway left. And there's a dividend tomorrow. It's a small dividend, but just something. <laughs> so uh, 20, it's just something to remember that uh, it has a dividend tomorrow. Okay. VIX isn't overstimulated despite the bearish ERs. That's a bullish divergence. VIX is only up 4%. And you say, well, VIX is up 4%. That's a lot. That's not a lot considering NASDAQ is down 2%. Do you see that? NASDAQ down 2% can typically yield 12, 13, 14% pop in VIX. There, so even though we had this earnings miss, there's not a lot of fear creeping into the market yet. And there's always the word yet. Whatever sentence I say, whatever analysis I give you, it's based on the data that I have up to this point. And as soon as I turn my mic off, more data is introduced into the market. So Apple's been holding strong. It's a key canary for us. It hasn't rolled over yet. VIX isn't overstimulated yet, and I'm taking that as bullish divergence. The Dow and blue chip names were super strong yesterday, and they're relatively green this morning. Look at United Healthcare. United Healthcare is up pretty massively this morning. They are approaching all time high at 509. Let me make sure that's all time high. 509.23 monthly inside bars, monthly bull flag. It's beautiful. Look at this beautiful day yesterday, big and green this morning. So these, and it's one of the top holdings in the Dow. So these blue chip names, if they remain relatively strong along with XLF, they could continue to prop up this market. And they, and by prop up market, I mean ES, not necessarily NASDAQ. I'm looking bearish initially, then I will be looking for hourly oversold bounces to create the daily higher lows on lots of charts. Here are five as examples. Oh, I didn't do it to capital L there. Tesla hourly higher low could set the bottom of the right shoulder on the daily IHS inverse head and shoulders. This is my queen of the mountain. This is my queen of the mountain setup. When hourly higher low could create, can't spell today, the daily higher low and the daily EQ. And I was asked, well, Lori, why do you like when better than LVS? I like when because it's clear technical setup. I like when things are crystal clear. Maybe because i am just got a simple brain, I'm from the South, maybe because I'm blonde, maybe because I had COVID, have COVID. But either way, I like things simple and straightforward. And this is a straightforward daily EQ with a daily inside bar. And what I'm looking to nail is this, a daily higher low compared to 8103. So that's why I like the simplicity of the win chart. Okay, so those are all my notes. Now let's go to ES and get you some levels. So this is not bad, y'all. This is not bad at all. Again, we're talking about ES, but ES could come down to 444350 and still be healthy and still be a potential bull flag. So I'm not alarmed yet. If we close below the 8 EMA, and that is the green right here, if we close below the 8 EMA, then I would be slightly more concerned. So your levels are resistance 4544, 4586, support, 4520, then down at 4474. NASDAQ. NASDAQ, of course, is way weaker. NASDAQ, despite all of this weakness, NASDAQ could still be a bull flag on the daily as long as we hold 14714. Why? How? How is this possible? Two reasons, in my opinion. Apple, Apple holding up so well and people holding their breath for Amazon. What if after hours, Amazon announced a stock split? As long as they announce a stock split without an offering, it would be fireworks. And I would not be trading Amazon. Well, maybe I would pro most likely be trading NASDAQ to the long side. So that's why I like I have control over my destiny because I trade futures. Whatever happens after hours, I can control it with stops or entries or additions. So 
just remember that the crazy old lady on the morning show said this. If Amazon announces a stock split, this bull flag will most likely be con- bull flag potential on the table could be confirmed for NASDAQ. And we are A-OK as long as we close above the 14714 on the daily. However, NASDAQ is by far the weakest. Resistance 14870, 15,000 psych, then 15153. Support 14751, 14729. I'm skipping the 10 year. It's not the 10 year is just not telling me a lot right now. We're double topping at 1811. We need it to sit down for NASDAQ to get a bounce going. RTY. RTY has a falling wedge look to me. I couldn't get the lines to line up this morning on the hourly, but it does have that look where you're getting little lower lows without a lot of follow through. So that's the key characteristic of a falling wedge. Resistance 2019, 2032, support 2005, 2000 psych, 1992. YM, YM's like, what the heck's going on? What's all the fuss about? If we see weakness in the Dow, in banks, in some of these blue chips, then ES could pull back a lot harder. We could pull back to 34612, 900 points below us, and still be a potential bull flag. That's how strong the Dow is. The Dow's like, what, who, where? Nothing's happening over here. 35332 support, 35167. Resistance, 35590. And then, and then, 35865. VIX. VIX is getting a little peppy here. As I I said, it's not super peppy. We got the hourly higher high, higher low. We're looking to change that trend now above 23.43. And what the market bulls want to see is for this to be a bear flag. They want this to roll on over and make a lower low. So we need the VIX to sit down in order for the market to get a bounce going. And it's getting a little peppy right here. So I won't be convinced of a market bounce until this sits down. And I should mention, let me go back to my notes and say this again. I am looking bearish initially, initially. So VIX can keep going for a while, then I want things to get hourly oversold, and then I wanna start looking in the bull direction. Bitcoin. Bitcoin couldn't change the 15 minute trend right there. We are in an hourly downtrend. Let's see if Bitcoin could lead the way for us again today. Resistance 37131, 37690. Support is at 36259, 36162. <laughs> Fred, yeah, it's not going to electrocute you. Yeah, if you could just hit the like button, that'd be great. Okay. Nope, I didn't give you Ethereum levels. Resistance. 2685, 2737, support 2577, and down at 2518. One second, y'all, I have a little coin problem I need to fix. I'll wait for it to pull up on the other screen. Let's look at gold. I was trading an oversold bounce that's not bouncing, so I need to get out. second okay now i'm out all right we're breaking support here on gold 1801 is support then 1794 resistance 1806 then 1809 in case you're wondering i was playing the idex idex uh oversold bounce and it's not bouncing it's just melting down so i just stopped out with a one percent loss so on gold we're in a downtrend looking for that daily lower high and it's most likely set now and this still could be a daily bear flag Oil, I am bearish oil. We're in a four hour downtrend. We're in an hourly downtrend with the potential. Let's see, is this a bear flag or have we bounced too much? We've bounced too much. It's negated the bear flag. So they've made enough room for hourly higher low compared to 86.75, then 86.55. Nat gas inventory today, major pullback. Man, this thing cannot hold gains. So frustrating for any Nat gas bull. I am not one of those, but it had the. Uh, the contango backwardation whatever happened last week with the contracts and then it's just been a meltdown since resistance 5395 support below 4889 is 
four eight five seven and four six two apple you're welcome thanks alex i appreciate you hitting the like button and uh we're, we've covered apple you know where i stand there amazon hourly is just now getting oversold we have earnings after hours so if you were amazon bear would you want to hold into earnings maybe maybe if you're looking at facebook uh, reaction you're like crap i'll become a millionaire if i hold amazon short overnight if they have earnings like facebook but i know personally from the amount of orders i order from amazon i would not want to be holding it short i'm watching this today it's already hourly oversold and that's not enough for me four hour oversold would even be better i doubt they let it get there on earnings day but I will be watching Amazon and if I trade it, it will be with commons only. And what I'm looking for, let me show you what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a weakness into the morning, possible falling wedge. I would be looking for some type of reversing pattern, either an inverse head and shoulders. Well, that's the worst drawing ever. But I would be looking for some type of bottoming pattern and then a place to put my, my stop below a higher low to bottom fish a possible run into the end of the day into earnings we see it happen often not every time but where a dip gets bought so we're hourly oversold on amazon day of earnings this is the queen of the mountain trade for me i just don't know where my fishing pole is going to end up it's going to end up at we're at 2886 now is it going to end up down at 2844 2803 i don't know what that bottoming pattern is going to look like but I am ready and excited to put my fishing pole in the water and look at a potential pop up into earnings today. Cisco, Cisco has had positive news this morning. They're sc I'm scouting a weekly higher low. I'm looking for that four hour higher low for that weekly higher low. That was pretty confusing, huh? So it just has this inverse, not that, inverse head and shoulders look to it and I would like a higher low compared to 54.54 for a potential swing. I've been looking at Cisco for my dad's account because of this dividend. It's not too shabby of a dividend. They have earnings mid-February, so I may have to abandon this because I want this for like a long swing for my dad. So I may have to wait till after earnings. But it's interesting nonetheless for looking, watching for a four hour higher low. Facebook okay don't get scared when i show you these numbers all right so a target we are at the 1.5 retrace okay can y'all see that 241 dollars and 35 cents the 1.618 extension fib extension to the downside and yes it's a thing we're pulling in pretty hard on nasdaq i wonder did jobless claims come out uh, we have jobless claims every Thursday typically, and I'm wondering if that's what happened. But we're pull pulling in pretty hard here, and what's going on with VIX? And VIX is popping pretty hard, so it may be the jobless claims numbers, but I'm just going to keep trucking, okay? So $230.10 is a FIB extension to the downside. Do I think we could touch it? Yep. I sure do. We're not even that oversold on the four hour. Look, we got way more oversold on the four hour over here on Facebook. So Facebook has had its, its share of drama and oversold bounces and oversold conditions. I would not be overly eager to buy this dip. But here's something else you can mark that the old lady said today. This may be the dip buying opportunity of the year once, the caveat, once, Facebook bottoms here and it's and it will most likely bottom in the low 200s just from experience who knows but this could be the dip buying opportunity of 2022 meta it's Facebook owns everything they own absolutely everything think about the advertising on Instagram and Facebook that you get and they own so many thing whatsapp things they own whatsapp so it could be, a, and this is my fundamental rant, this has nothing to do with technical analysis, but I will be watching and I will be applying the three day rule. Sometimes you gotta wait for the stinkiness to go away and it may bottom around 2.30. Let's see, Google. Google's strong. If the market were to bounce, I would watch Google here. It's holding this 50 RSI. If we hold 28.90, I would watch Google. Your next support below that is 2.857. Google's holding up well for a potential long. 
I wouldn't go along initially. We need things to flush on out. Like, come on, flush it. Let everybody pee their pants, and then let's get get this party on the road. Next support on IWM, 197.97. Where is my alert? It should be there. I'm on the hourly. Huh. I thought I said it. Maybe because we've already hit it. So I'm looking for first hourly oversold on IWM for a potential long. And what we're looking for is this potential daily inverse head and shoulders. So Tesla looks like this and XBI looks like this. So I'll look at them now. Tesla looks like that. XBI looks like that. You see it? Okay, those three are queen of the mountain trades for me. To the long side waiting for hourly oversold. NIO. I've got an alert set for hourly oversold, looking for the daily higher low compared to 1931. Your le next level is 2176, 21.60, then $21. Let me see where hourly oversold would be. Uh, 2234 would be hourly oversold. So I doubt we would see these numbers. So most likely $22 psychological maybe. NIO was my trade of the day yesterday. I hope you benefited from it, from the queen of the mountain setup. And now I like it to the long side around, let's don't change the formula. Let's do what I've been doing. I like it around $22. NVIDIA, I like it. That was a beautiful top fish yesterday. I'm looking for hourly oversold. And that would be around 232. So again, I'm looking bearish at open on most names. And then I'd be looking to, to get to find a spot where it's oversold. You see what I did there? Spot. Spot's dangerous. Spot's the most dangerous chart I see. And I want you to look and tell me why. Why is this dangerous? Look at this four hours, not even oversold. It's down 12%. It had a big bounce from that initial reaction. But this has room to the downside. I am bearish spot. Despite being down 12% in pre-market, I think this has runway to the downside. So caution. Tesla, 851.47 would be symmetry for the right shoulder. That would be the area I'd be looking for. Let's look, where's hourly oversold? And y'all can see I have my alert set. Let me wait for back burner to pull up. Hourly oversold, we're right here at 87572. So 851.10 is that area that, I, that I'm looking for, 851 for the symmetry. That looks like, it. why does that look like a uterus with ovaries? Lord have mercy, Lori. Do I need less coffee or more coffee? That's the question. I like Tesla long when I like it in this daily EQ, looking for that higher low compared to 81.03. And XBI looking for that inverse head and shoulders, 85.31 would make it symmetrical on the daily what where's the hourly oversold is at 89.24 is hourly oversold and i got my alert set but just if you want an estimate all right now what lots of bad news on spot yep can i look at lucid sure if you could hit the like button i'd appreciate it and no politics please i don't talk politics in my personal life and i'm sure i ain't gonna talk about it in pregame all right lucid does not have enough room for a higher low. Do you see that? You are not the father. It does not have enough room for a higher low. So this is a bear flag on the daily if I've ever seen one. Careful, careful on Lucid. All right. Oh, uh, come on, Adam, chill out. Yep, I covered gold, let me, I covered gold very, I didn't cover gold well. Daily bear flag potential, hourly downtrend. We just broke support and we're slightly bouncing. Bull's best case scenario would be a 15 minute inverse head and shoulders here, but again, daily lower high looks set. Okie dokie, y'all. Stop, stop. Uterus, yes, politics, no. Okay, let's look at Luna and then we'll wrap it up. Okay, Luna is looking for a weekly higher low. Daily downtrend bear flag potential. Did not make enough room for a higher low. Four hour bear flag potential. 
hourly bear flag potential. Lordy. Bear flag, bear flag, bear flag. When, if we can change the hourly trend, then the daily high or low is most likely set. So your benchmark is $49. Got to get over $49. All right, that's it for me. Denzi will be live in two minutes. We'll have our midday stream live, our end of day stream live for all you TCGers, pre-gamers. Hit the like button and hit the subscribe button and the notify button and use stop losses.